Should everyone use CDNs, or are there times where they don't make sense to use? I think um, if you're a small site and you have like 20 page views a day, then you probably don't want to think sure. about using a CDN. Might be overkill. Uh, but another case would be is that you target an audience in a small geographical region. For example, you're an American company and you are starting a site in a small country called the Netherlands, where I live. Um, it's a very small country, then you'll probably want to have local hosting there. And the speed difference between a CDN that has edge servers there and having a local server is not that big. But then if you're the same company and you have the same site, but then localized into the French language and you want to run that in France as well, then you'll probably be in a situation where using a CDN does make sense because otherwise you would have to have a server in the Netherlands, a replicate of that in France and do synchronization and all that. And using a CDN would make a lot of sense because it's quite easy and you'll get the speed benefit. Sure. Now, now should all website assets be served through a CDN? I'm thinking of you know images, videos, right. that type of stuff. But then we get into text and files and, and right. all that. Right, okay. Well, I think in general you could say if the content is cacheable by the CDN, you should serve that. Mm -hmm. um, most sites use a CDN to serve the static assets, as they're called, so images and CSS, yeah. JavaScript files. Um, but even the HTML can be, uh, can be made cacheable by the site owner, and by that made uh, cacheable by the CDN as well. If, uh, I think there are quite a few sites that serve the same blog article, for example, to everybody across the world. Uh, and if that page doesn't change a lot, why not have the CDN cache it and send it to end users from servers closer to the end users? So maybe some of those static pages, the about yes, page, the absolutely. FAQ, yeah. those If you have things. dynamic content, uh, a lot, quite a few CDNs, the larger CDNs can um, uh, accelerate dynamic content as well. Um, but it's, it's a little more complicated. So you have to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Is there a danger in making a blanket assumption that CDN is equal to performance? Um, I think that, in general, um, it's true that the CDN will make your site faster. Um, and it has a lot to do with the simple fact that their servers are close to your end users, so there's less latency. Mm -hmm. um, but I, yeah, I want to stress that people should monitor the performance of the CDN. So every CDN talks about how they make your site faster and performance and speed matters. They all communicate the same message. Um, but is it 10% faster or 25% or 50%? I would like to know that. Um, and not just when I switch to the CDN, but I would like to know that every day, mm -hmm. how they are, how much faster are they making my site? Because that's what you're paying for, right? Right. Yeah. So, so keeping an eye on that. Keeping really an eye on that. Defining yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I, we talk to a lot of people that have no idea, really. Do yeah. you monitor CDN performance? No. And so they you just should. think, okay, I'm going to dump my stuff over there. And it's, and, and it's going to be faster, right? Because right. because it, it's closer. Yeah, that's that's a fair assumption, but you should at least validate that. And in my opinion, you should keep validating that. Um, so what, can you imagine that you put your content on a CDN and you measure the, the, the performance benefit and it's 50% and you're all happy? Mm -hmm. What if that performance benefit degrades to 40 and 30 and 20? Right. You would like to know, right? Sure. So yeah, you have to monitor the performance and um, have a good relationship with your CDN um, so that you can call the engineers and talk to them about the data that you're collecting and yeah, just stay on the ball. That's right. important. Right. So last question for you. What are the key, we were talking about you know, staying on the ball there. What are the key metrics mm. that should be watched? Right. Um, well, the, the, it's obvious that you want to measure uh, delivery speed. Right? The, the, con the CDN should deliver your content faster. Uh, so how fast is that? Is that 100 milliseconds? Is that 200 milliseconds? Um, but the metric, um, in my opinion, you want to measure CDN performance from an end user point of view. Right? So from the moment you start the timer, from the moment the browser starts to request for an object, and you stop the timer the moment the last byte of that object comes in. Um, and you have to make sure that 
you also include DNS time there. Um, because DNS, DNS times vary greatly uh, between CDNs. So some, on s with some CDNs, DNS is quite fast. Others are significantly slower. Um, and, and I see a lot of um, data that's about response time um, and, and, and quite a bit uh, um, or a large percentage of that data does not include DNS. And I, th yeah, I just think that's, um, that's wrong. Mm. And you should, you should not just look at the, the average or the mean, but also look at 90th percentile and median and get different, look at histograms. That's also another thing I'd like to mention. Uh, because the, the mean and the median are what I call summary sti statistics, mm -hmm. and they hide a lot of information. Uh, and a histogram can show you what the distribution is. Um, so make, make sure that you put some effort into collecting the data in a good way, and also spending time, of course, on looking at the data, uh, and definitely include the DNS. Uh, another KPI could be uh, what is called the cache miss rate. Um, so when a client, a browser, an end user, requests a file from the CDN and the CDN cannot serve it because it doesn't have it in cache, it will have to fetch the file from the origin server. So that, that hmm. will take a bit longer, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, so you want to know how high the cache miss rate is. Is that only 1% or is that 2 or maybe even 3% or mm -hmm. 4%? And there can be patterns in um, what files does the CDN quite often not send from cache, right? So that could that, that information can be very useful to um, enable the CDN to do its job better. Maybe you're sending your video files to the CDN in a way that it's difficult for him to cache or mm -hmm. not possible at all, and you, you like to know that. And you can spot that in the, uh, in, the in the cache miss rate. Sometimes the CDNs will give you uh, insight on that, um, deep insight or high level, uh, again, summary statistics on that. Uh, so you can also look at your own access log files on your own server because the CDM will fetch mm -hmm. it from your server. So if you look at those log files and you see that video files for in a certain directory get requested a lot, you should take a look at those files. You know, try to find the answer to the question, why does the CDM request that file so often? Right. What am I doing wrong? That's, um, that's how I should approach it. It's a good starting point. Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate yeah. you taking the time. It was good. Thank you.